We're standing in front of the original Deeds Barn. It's a carriage house which was owned by Edward and Edith Deeds, and it was behind their home at 319 Central Avenue in Dayton. The Deeds Barn is located inside the Heritage Center of Manufacturing and Entrepreneurship, a major museum exhibit gallery that's part of Carillon Historical Park in Dayton, Ohio. Inside of this barn in uh, the early 20th century, Edward A. Deeds, Charles F. Kettering, and a group of their friends and associates became a group known as the Barn Gang. Charles F. Kettering was a farm boy who was born and raised in Loudonville, Ohio, a small community in northeastern part of Ohio. And he was always questioning the world around him. He was always fascinated by how things worked. He was fascinated by mechanical devices. He once saved some of his own money to purchase a telephone simply so that he could take it apart and investigate every piece and part of it and learn really how it worked. He was offered a job uh, in Dayton, Ohio by a man named Edward A. Deeds who among his other duties was overseeing the inventions division at NCR. From the time that Charles F. Kettering begins working at NCR, his career is really on an upward bound. In very short order, he does what Edward Deeds and some other engineers had been working on intermittently, and that was to eliminate the need for a mechanical crank on the side of a cash register and to, in fact, replace it with an electric motor. He was able to do this in very short order, and upon seeing how gifted of an inventor Charles Kettering was, Edward Deeds asked Kettering to come over to his home so the two of them could become better friends. Um, they could begin working on uh, various ideas together. Edward Deeds was very much a businessman, a very far-sighted businessman, and Deeds believed that there were these two fields in America, and um, the automotive industry and the field of electricity, and he felt that the two could really be merged, and it could probably be quite profitable while also providing some important products for the American public. Deeds once said to Kettering, there's a river of gold flowing past us. Why don't we throw up a dam and sluice some of it our way? And again, the idea there being that he really felt that the automobile in its infancy was just waiting for the right types of developments to really become important and to really be something that everyday people, middle class, average Americans would want and would be able to drive and would want to drive. So the barn, which was located behind the home at 319 Central Avenue in Dayton, was really the location of all of this energy and, and activity that was going on by the barn gang. It would be similar to the idea of a startup company in a garage in California or in Silicon Valley. But in this particular example, these were men working um, all hours of the night, sometimes up to 36 hours in a, at, a, at a time, 36 hours in a row, trying to crack some of these puzzles of the engineering behind the um, automobile. Uh, the first problem that they encountered was looking at automobile batteries. And many of the automobile batteries in these days were very unreliable. You would be driving your car and suddenly, without warning, it would stall out. It would, the, the battery would die. And so then you had to get out in front of your car, crank it up to start it again, and then hope for the best as you traveled down the road. So the first thing that Deeds and Kettering work on, which ends up becoming available in 1910 Cadillac, is an electric ignition system for cars. So that it constantly was recharging that battery, constantly providing a constant power source for the automobile. From there then, they work um, in, in greater detail, in greater depth, with the Cadillac Motor Car Company. Specifically, the notion was, let's get rid of that cumbersome manual crank, that dangerous crank on the front of the car, and replace it with something a little bit more reliable. This 1912 Cadillac behind me was the first automobile that you could purchase anywhere in America that had the Dayton-made Delco self-starter on it. It was really a great leap forward in uh, automotive history. So visitors can come in and actually see an original 1912 Cadillac. They can learn about the step-by-step -step process of developing an electric ignition system and electric self-starter and learn a little bit about the formation of Delco uh, right here in the barn. The um, Cadillac company itself is an interesting um, part of this story. When you think about the time in which Deeds and Kettering were living and working here in the barn, there were literally hundreds of automotive companies across Ohio 
and thousands of them nationwide. One of them that really came to the top, kind of the cream of the crop, was the Cadillac Motor Car Company. Organized in 1902, its president, Henry Martin Leland, was a big believer in being at the cutting edge of automotive quality. So he was really the one that worked closely with Deeds and Kettering to put their inventions onto a mass-produced automobile, in this case, on the 1912 Cadillac. And that was um, then part of a relationship that went on and, and lasted for many years. Cadillac, from the very beginning, had a reputation for high quality and um, really high-end craftsmanship for their cars. The work of Deeds and Kettering and the Barn Gang in the original Deeds Barn in Dayton, Ohio, was instrumental in modernizing the automobile and making it a 20th century um, mass-produced, everyone-must-have type of item. It really made the automobile something different from just a toy for the rich or a passing fad. It made it dependable. The company that Deeds and Kettering started in the barn becomes a major branch of the General Motors Corporation. And Charles Kettering truly does lead the research arm of General Motors through its golden age. And although he retires in the 1940s, the work that he did really put General Motors ahead. They became the largest and most successful automaker in the world. But the work that Kettering did in the barn and the success with the self-starter was just the first of what will become many um, inventions and innovations. He would eventually secure over 140 patents in his name, most of them dealing with um, automotive research and the automotive industry. Uh, many of them were things that people take for granted today uh, with the automotive world. But he also worked on things like the uh, two-cycle diesel engine. He worked on quick-drying lacquer paint for cars. He worked on um, a variety of other things, too. He worked on items such as uh, fever therapy. Um, he worked on coming up with better medical devices. He was interested in research. He did research on uh, harnessing energy from plant photosynthesis. So a wide array of things. But the 140 patents that Kettering secured in his lifetime were really a foundation that then when General Motors spread throughout the world and became this company that you know, you think about the sun never set on General Motors. Charles Kettering was part and parcel of that success. In an entire center here at Carillon Park where we deal with manufacturing and entrepreneurship, we really feel that no building speaks more strongly to this question of being entrepreneurs than Deeds Barn.